a hymn for him and only for him a hymn for him because he lives i can face tomorrow because he my story this is my song praise in my savior all that they long this is my story This is my song praise in my savior all good evening guys that was robin grant and esther williams isaac singing hymns that were featured on previous episodes of a hymn for him this is the 13th episode welcome guys my name is king worship and you are tuned in to the most informative uh christian program right now huh <laughs> i'm just kidding but anyway welcome and i just want to extend a happy thanksgiving to all the canadians happy thanksgiving family now we are moving into our episode for today and we will be featuring two hymns the first is Revive Us Again. Now, this hymn was written by William Patton McKay in 1867. William was born on the 13th of May, 1839 in Scotland, and he passed on the 22nd of August, 1885. William was a doctor, he was a minister, and he was a hymn writer. He wrote over 17 hymns, in his lifetime. This hymn, Revive Us Again, was published 12 years after it was written, and eventually it was published in 1,142 hymnals. It was based from the scripture, Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 2. Now, the story behind this hymn, I find, was an interesting one when I was doing my research. It just shows that God is an intentional God and he will go out of his way to find you and to save you and to, you know, just call you back home. And so this is what happened to William McKay. Now, the story says that William never believed in Jesus Christ when he was younger and his mother knew this. And so she was a praying woman and she constantly prayed for his soul salvation and eventually he grew up to be a very successful person he became a doctor but he was very wicked in his heart in his heart this is a personal testimony that he gave um he considered himself to be a wicked person and now one day while on the job an injured laborer came into the hospital where he worked and that laborer was injured so bad that he knew there was no way that he was going to survive um, his injuries. And so the doctor, uh, Dr. Dr. McCain knew and, and the man knew that he was going to die. So as a doctor, he asked him uh, if he had any final requests or if he had any contact that he need, any relatives that he need to contact to let them know what was going to happen and so forth. And the dying man strangely requested to see his landlady because he 
he remembered he owed his landlady some some monies and so he wanted to clear his debt and he wanted the landlady to bring a book the book for him the book so they followed through with that and contacted the landlady and she did as he requested now dr mckay visited this patient as much as he can before he passed and he noticed he had a strange peace about his situation i mean not many of us could stand knowing that yeah we could pass anytime soon even though we are all appointed you know to die but because that was so imminent it was so near it was so real for him he thought that he would have been in distress but the doctor noticed that he was in peace and that had to do with the book the book that was brought to him now after this injured man passed uh the nurse was you know doing her cleaning up and everything and she held the book that was under his sheets in her hand and dr mckay was curious to know what this book was about now he asked the nurse for the book and to his surprise the book was a bible now you see it wasn't any old bible it wasn't just a bible but to his shock and amazement it was his bible it was his bible that he had when he was a child you see it was the bible that his mother gave him when he was a boy and his name was still written in that bible in his mother's handwriting he was stunned and he was ashamed at the same time why because when he left his parents home to be on his own he had to sell this bible for needed cash and you see this bible was the last gift that his mother had given to him when he was before she died before she passed it was the last gift and he sold it cheaply just for cash at the time but god is so intentional in what he does who knew that this very man held that bible had that bible and from the time he came into contact with that bible knowing that that was his it changed his life completely he was changed he was refreshed he was revived and this encounter led him to eternal life to the point that he wrote such beautiful hymns including this one revive us again welcome mr jeffrey ledger and mrs ledger as they present this hymn to you this evening Thank you, Athene. Thank you, Jeffrey, for presenting Revive Us Again. And Jeffrey said that this was one of his favorite hymns. And it is one of mine as well. We move into our second hymn this evening. And this hymn is called Softly and Tenderly. Now, Softly and Tenderly was written by Will L. Thompson in 1880. Will was an American composer who studied in Germany. He studied music. Uh, he was born in 1847 and he passed in 1909. He was a composer of patriotic songs. He also composed uh, secular songs and then he composed gospel music. He was also known to be a publisher. Now this hymn is one of the most used invitational hymn 
in its day um, in the evangelistic movement of that time. Now, the story behind this hymn is quite simple, very simple. When Will first started to write, most of his written songs, his early written songs, were rejected by publishers. And that didn't sit well with him. And you know what he did? He formed his own publishing company. And the first song that he published was Softly and Tenderly. And it became an instant success. After so many rejections of his writings, you know, he doubted himself and um, he doubted his calling in writing. But after this success, he was inspired to write. And he continued to write hymns and songs, sung by so many famous uh, artists and so forth. Now it is alleged that the famous D.L. Moody on his deathbed made a statement about softly and tenderly. He said to him that I would have rather I would have rather written softly and tenderly than than anything that I have done in my whole life. He was just basically telling him that it was a great work and it was a great him that would go through and bless nations and now presenting this hymn to you this evening is one of my friend elijah joseph welcome him as he bless your heart good night everyone i'm just gonna do this hymn i hope it bless your heart you know one of my favorite old time hymn may god bless you and may your heart be blessed as you listen to the words and the song Softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portals, he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Come home, come home, you are weary, come home, honestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling us sinners. Should we tarry when Jesus is pleading, pleading for you and for me? Why should we linger and heed not his mercies, mercies for you and for me? Thank you. God bless you. Have a great evening. Thank you, Elijah. And thank you, everyone, for joining with me this evening for another episode. It is always a pleasure presenting a hymn for him for you and for him, of course. But before I go, I want to shout out Oma. Thank you for leaving your comments and liking and sharing. I want to shout out Kimberly Coombs. Thank you, my honey bun. <laughs> Uh, in Barbados. I want to shout out Pam, Zarina Taylor. Thank you for your comments and your um, continued support as well. You know, there are comrades and there are confidant 
Pam is one of my confidants. Thank you again, Daryl Young and Keva Telfa in Jamaica. And also Wesley Bob, thank you for your comments and your support. I am your host, King Worship, wishing you happy Thanksgiving and letting you know that as we worship the King, we should worship the King in spirit and in truth. Be blessed, guys. See you next week.